And we're live. Welcome to Sulha, where our goal is to aid in the reconciliation process between Israelis and Palestinians. We have a very exciting episode today. Uh, two proud activists, both actually support one state from the river to the sea with quite different visions of how that state looks. Um, I'll start by saying that there's quite a large ideological gap between our guests, but we're going to do our best to have a respectful conversation and hopefully we'll even find some common ground in this in this discussion and at the very least it's going to be a good informative entertaining show for our audience before we get started quick shout out to our patreon visionary members we have trivium energy pty ltd srg cannabis max marine geffen posner adam becker maya kimberly jordan walter nate hinman julian mouser nathaniel hohauser and our one and only visionary member our, our own one and only legendary member, Speedy Weedy, which is a cannabis company in Southern California. If you want to support the show, you can find ways to do that in the description. All and any support is greatly appreciated. You can now become a member directly through YouTube. You don't need to support only, not only on Patreon, you can support on YouTube. Uh, if you want to find more information about our guests, you could also find their bios in the description as well as um, links to their social media information. Um, let's get this show on the road. Um, we're going to start with you, Yishai. Please share with us your vision for the land. Adar, thanks so much for having me on. Socha again. It's fun uh, to be here and it's fun to be with everybody. It's a, it's a rainy and cold night here in Judea, and hopefully the electricity will hold up. Uh, tonight's going to be a, an interesting night for sure. I think I, I wanted to start with, uh, um, first thing, my name is Yishai. I'm the international spokesman for the Jewish community of Hebron. It's the oldest Jewish community in the world, continuous uh, and uh, continues to, to thrive, even though we are challenged by a lot of jihadism and, and attacks. And I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the, the Hebron is famous because it's got the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs, the forefathers and mothers of the Jewish people. But before we, we get to the issue of Hebron, just kind of a, um, uh, I wanted to create a framework by which we understand what is the basis of the Jewish state in the land of Israel. And there's really three, three pillars that I think a lot of people don't hear about, and I just want to make it fast and clear. <clears throat> the first pillar of the Jewish state is the history and the Bible. The Bible, the Tanakh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Tanakh is a book that has been read by millions and millions of people throughout the world. It's an ancient book. It's a godly book. And, and therein tells the story of the Jewish people from 3,800 years ago. Muslims believe in this book. Christians believe in this book. Uh, Abraham made a purchase in Hebron 3,800 years ago, and the rest is the story of the Jewish people going to the land of Israel, getting kicked out of the land of Israel, coming back to the land of Israel, establishing two commonwealths in the land of Israel. The, uh, so much of, of international law uh, that recognized Jewish rights to the land of Israel recognized our indigeneity to the land. It was all related to the reading knowledge, love of the Bible as a historic and godly document. So the Bible and, and Jewish history since then are key pillar to the Jewish people's connection to the land of Israel. People who disagree that the Bible is important, people who've never read the Bible, people who like to cast off the Torah and make it out to be something else, they, that's one of the pillars that they will attack. They will attack Israel because they'll say, ah, the Bible is nothing and you're basing your stuff on a 3,000 or 4,000 year old book and who cares? But a lot of people do care, and certainly uh, Jews uh, coming back to the land of Israel care about the, the, that pillar called the Bible. That's one. The second pillar, which is very, very important and is oftentimes forgotten today, is nationalism, plain old nationalism. Uh, nationalism means that there are national states in this world. For example, Hungary or Japan or Azerbaijan or Iceland or, or a myriad of other states. Uh, a lot of times today, the attackers against Israel are going to tell you, why is there a state just for Jews? Well, but there's a state for just Saudis, and there's a state for just Egyptians, and there's a state for Italians, and there's a state for Hungarians and Poles and Japanese. And they're not out there trying to make the case that this is a state for everybody. Uh, uh, the Self-determination. The idea that, that rose up that people would have rights in their indigenous land and they could run it the way they wanted to run it. They didn't have to let everybody in. Uh, made sense not so long ago to everybody and today to less and less people, sadly, because people have forgotten the basics of what nationalism is. So some of the attacks that we're probably going to hear tonight are going to be against the very idea of nationalism. But that is the second pillar of the Jewish state is nationalism. The third pillar of the Jewish state in the land of Israel is that it's a Middle Eastern country. 
And that's also sometimes forgotten. You'll hear uh, all kinds of Hasbra folks explain that Israel's Jewish and democratic and all that. You're not going to hear that from me. I'm going to say we're Jewish and Middle Eastern, which means that you have to know how to behave in the Middle East. When there are attackers, terrorists trying to get you, you got to wake up earlier than them, get them in their bed. Uh, if, if, if there's a whole uh, mosque or tribe or, or group of people that's uh, 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 teaching their children uh, to, to destroy you, you got you to gotta fight with that clan. You got to know how to deal with that clan, just like Middle Eastern countries know how to deal with a terrorist within themselves. For example, how Jordan did uh, dealt with the PLO in, in Black September. I'm not, I'm not pro you know, mass killing like that, but you have to know that we're a Middle Eastern country. And for Israel to survive in this tough region, it has to know about itself. We're an ethnic, Semitic, Middle Eastern people. And those are the three pillars for which Israel needs, on, on which Israel survives. The Bible and our history, nationalism as a, as a simple value of self-determination, and thirdly, that we're a Middle Eastern country. And you're going to see that every single attack that you hear from today, uh, from uh, Amr Zahar, you're going to hear that it's an attack on one of these three principles, and it's going to try to make you forget that this is one of the principles uh, that Israel stands on. Now, with regarding to, to uh, the future, I believe that there is a future of coexistence in this region, uh, a, a peaceful region. My vision of peace is very simple. It's very simple. I wish everybody would just like, if you remember anything from tonight, remember this. What does peace in the future look like? A strong Jewish Israel surrounded by strong Arab countries, strong Arab Muslim countries or other working in concert together. That's what the Abraham Accords is about. That's what we have with the UAE. Uh, that's what we have with Morocco. That's what we're going to have with Saudi Arabia. And that's the way it's moving forward. We're moving towards a, a regional relationship based on the Abrahamic principle that we're all Semitic brothers and sisters. But there are some people in this region, uh, and I think my interlocutor, uh, represents that way of thinking, although he's not from this region. He's actually from Detroit. He's sitting in Detroit. Uh, and that's, I guess, an important marker about, about you know, who he is in this, in this uh, discussion. Uh, but there are people in this region, which I think he represents, which don't want so-called normalization. They want to continue the battle forever. They want to get is rid of Israel in toto. And so everything that I said a few minutes ago, that there could be, uh, uh, there is a movement towards reconciliation and normalization but there's another group of people, I sometimes call them jihadists. Let's call them anti-normalization people. People who want to fight forever. And uh, Amr Zahar from his writings is one of those people. And I have to, I have to uh, get a few things out here, some quotes. I, every quote that I have of Amr Zahar's are quotes from his Twitter, quotes from his blog, quotes from his speeches. He starts out by saying, quick reminder, all forms of Zionism are racist. Every single one. Thanks, free Palestine. Zionism is racism. So therefore, right from the get-go, we understand that we're dealing with somebody who really doesn't see any value in Israel as a Jewish state in this land whatsoever. It just does not fit in his mind as a, as a place that has any rights. But just so you know how he really feels about things, he says, describing defenders of Israel as scumbags, pigs, and bastards is not, nece is not necessary. Zionist is sufficiently insulting Palestine. So when if I identify myself as a Zionist, you can understand that I'm Zahir behind any comedic line that he might say thinks of me as a scumbag pig and a bastard. So therefore, conversation with him is not going to be very fruitful, probably. But why is he on this program in the first place? Why is he doing that? You know, that that having this discussion is in itself an act of normalization, you may think, and that may be argued. But he writes, explains that from a blog post from just a year ago, a year ago, and he says, in my view, discourse with Zionist organizations or individuals that is, precise, that is precisely centered on condemning Israel's racist nature is not normalization. The great Edward Said routinely debated and destroyed Zionists quite publicly. And, and he goes on to explain that that's basically his modus operandi. The reason that he's here today is to destroy a Zionist. He's not here for a sulcha, which means, you know, peacemaking in Arabic. He's not here for that. He's here to, to rip me down and to destroy the very idea of a Jewish state in general, in toto. And therefore, I simply will uh, identify uh, Amr, Amr Zahir. I'll identify him as an enemy as what he identifies himself towards me as an enemy. But what kind of enemy is he? Who's really anti-normalization? Here's an article just from a few days ago from uh, uh, Ashar Kalaswat, a very important Middle Eastern newspaper, and it says, eight Hamas Islamic Jihad leaders leave Gaza to live abroad, and they live in, in uh, Qatar and in Doha in fancy five-star hotels. This guy, Ismail Haniya, 
He's a billionaire, a multi-billionaire, not a millionaire. And just like Yasser Arafat died with, with multi-billion dollars in his, uh, in his bank account. These folks are corrupt. Of course, they're anti-normalization. They make their money off this war. And so too, Amr Zahar, he's going to sit back there in Detroit and he's going to decry against normalization with the Zionists forever. Only say one thing, free Palestine, free Palestine. That's what he says in his speeches. But it's on the back of who? It's on the back of average people who want to live a better life, who want to normalize. I meet with Arab Palestinians every month who want to normalize, who want to have a decent life with Israel in some relationship, in some way, in some fashion. But for Amr Zahar out in Detroit, it's not necessary. He'll ride it. He'll ride it. And that's what today is about. He's going to try to embarrass me. He's going to try to destroy the, any semblance of logic of the Jewish state. He's going to make it out to be apartheid and this, and this guy was hurt. And look what you guys did. All it is is to continue the battle forever. He's not only an enemy of Yishai Fleischer's and Zionism, but also an enemy of Arabs who want to live a normal life. I know that UAE Arabs, Saudi Arabian Arabs, others see him as an enemy towards progress. And so therefore there is peace in the future, but not with folks like Amr Zahar. Th thank you, Yishai. Uh, Amr, before you take the floor, just one quick reminder uh, for those in chat over here, have a vibrant discussion, but anybody engaging in personal attacks is just going to be banned from chat. Uh, you're welcome in our space, but you you must do so respectfully. So consider this your only warning. Uh, Amr, the floor is yours. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that I was told that we were going to start off with three minutes each. I think that was a lot more than three minutes. No big deal. I was also lectured before this thing to stay away from personal tax, but that's okay. I'm, I'm used to it, so it, it's not a problem, but I would um, just let the audience know that uh, that's what we were told before this started. I'm going to start with actually answering your question, Adar, and I'm sure we can get into many of the other issues that um, Yeshai brought up earlier. My vision for Palestine, something that I've written about a lot, um, is pretty simple, which is one secular democratic state in the borders of mandate Palestine. In other words, the borders that the British and French made in 1917, which today basically means everything that is the West Bank, Gaza, and uh, Israel proper. This means one person, one vote, not a Jewish state, not an Arab state, not a Muslim state, not a Christian state, not a Palestinian state, but simply a state of the people. You know, Yeshai wants to paint me in certain ways. By the way, thanks for the marketing of my quotes. I did say those things. I don't shy away from them. I'm not ashamed of them. Um, but a lot of the, the arguments that sort of Zionists try to make now is that, look, Israel is simply the state of the Jewish people. We're returning to our ancient homeland. And um, that's it. And this would be fine and dandy um, if it hadn't also resulted in the displacement of you know, almost 1 million people in 1948. There are about 5 million refugees today. They exist. They're real. They have a right to return to their homeland, no matter the circumstances of their leaving, whether or not they left because they were their village was massacred or whether they were expelled violently or whether they just left because it was hostile conditions or whether even Arab nations told them, hey, leave, we'll defeat them and you can come back. No matter the circumstances, of their expulsion, they have a right to return. That's pretty much ingrained in international uh, law. Um, and to sort of deny or be silent on that history, look, I'll be the first to tell you, are Jews indigenous to the land of Palestine or Judea or Samaria or the land of Israel or whatever you want to call it? Yes, of course they are. Of course they are. But does that claim of indigeneity uh, allow you to expel another group of people and deny their return? Give me a moral argument for that. I don't think so. And so my vision is that, of course, everyone lives. There's room. I mean, the Israeli government has no problem finding room to build new settlements for new Jewish refugees or immigrants that want to come to Palestine all the time. So there's room. Um, you know, I'll... 
I'll do away with the ideas. I mean, you know, it's sort of, um, I don't know, what's the word we want to use? Uh, uh, rich to say, hey, I'm sitting here debating a Palestinian who doesn't live there. Yeah, my 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 grandparents were kicked out of their home by Zionist forces in Yaffa in 1948. So, you know, yeah, of course, I have lived outside of Palestine for most of my life. So, I mean, this kind of rich to say something like that and to deny the, the simple thing, which is we wish to have our right of return in force and we wish to live in a secular democratic state. Now, another time you'll hear people say, well, look, there's other Arab countries. Go there or go live there or whatever. Well, we're not from there. We have as much of a history in that land as anybody else. In fact, historians have pretty clearly said that the Palestinians of today are a mix of all the people that have come through the land over the last three, 4,000 years. I mean, Jews weren't the first people in the land, right? There were other people that we know, even the Bible tells us, even if you take uh, the Bible as a purely historical document, which scholars don't agree about that anyway, but even if you took the Bible as a purely historical document, there were other people there. I mean, Jerusalem was a settlement before David was there. We know all these things. And so the Palestinians of today are a mix of all of those people, including Jews, by the way, over the centuries that have lived in the land of Palestine. So the Zionist argument, however, says that these people are not somehow indigenous to the land, that they, that they only stem from the Arabs who came in the year uh, six uh, in the 600s, which of course is not true. Palestine wasn't empty when the Muslim Arab conquerors came. Uh, so, I mean, and, and Arabs were actually in Palestine before Omar ibn al-Khattab came. We know that from Arab history of Arabs in Jordan. So, I mean, again, the denial of Palestinian indigeneity is essential to the idea of, of Zionism, right? They have to deny that we're from there or else they have to grapple with that. I'm fully accepting that Jews are from there. I don't, I don't make the arguments that some other people might make that, you know, hey, the, the Ashkenazi Jews are only from Europe or they're a European invention. Whatever, if Jews say that they're, if, if even European Jews say that their history goes all the way back to their expulsion by the Romans from the land of Palestine 2,000 years ago, great, fine. We can accept all of that. I'm simply saying every human life is worth another human life. No one's better than anyone else. A Jewish state in the land of Palestine says that Jews have more right, not says, actually acts, right? Zionism ultimately, Zionism is what Zionism does. And it, there are numbers of laws which obviously favor Jews over non-Jews, let alone the nation state law that was passed a few years ago, but even as simply as the law of return that says any Jew from anywhere in the world can return tomorrow and get citizenship. And that right is not extended to Palestinians who also can trace their lineage to Palestine pre-1948. Um, in fact, the trouble in Sheikh Jarrah, where another family was expelled today, their house demolished in the dead of night, so no cameras would be there. 20 members of a family made homeless in Jerusalem today in order to pave way for Jewish settlement. That's all based on Israeli laws that say Jews can claim ownership of land before 1948, so be before the state. Jews can claim ownership of land before 1948 and, and pursue that claim in court, and Palestinians cannot. I mean, as a lawyer, I'm sure that that Yeshai would, would understand the ridiculousness of a law like that. But this is the world that we find ourselves in. So ultimately, I say, Palestinians, Jews, Arabs, Muslims, Christians, everybody who is from there should live under a secular democratic state where anybody could be the prime minister, where the people could decide whoever leads them, that it's not based on one ethnicity or race or religion. It's as simple as that to me. Israel now currently does function as one state, but it functions as an apartheid state. It says Jews get more rights than others. The Palestinians who live in the West Bank and Gaza are fully governed by the state of Israel. Their electricity can be turned off 
by a switch by the state of Israel because it all functions under the same infrastructure, right? The banking system, the financial system, the electricity, the grid, the cell phone. The Palestinian cell phone companies that market themselves as Palestinian are buying bandwidth from Israeli companies because Israel controls everything. It's two systems for two different people. We have a name for that. It's called apartheid. I'm saying an end to that. And in as much as Zionism, and I've never met a form of Zionism that doesn't say we need to maintain a Jewish majority in the state, or at least a Jewish majority among citizens of the state. I've never met a form of Zionism that didn't say that. In as much as every form of Zionism says that, yes, every form of Zionism is racist by definition. When you say we need to maintain a particular ethnic, I mean, imagine if an American political party or political movement came forward, which they have before, but I mean, imagine if it even happened today, that said, look, the, the directive of our party, of our movement, is to maintain a white majority in America. It wouldn't be pretty difficult, and I'm sure Yeshai would label that very quickly as racist. And so, of course, every form of Zionism, in as much as every form of Zionism I've ever come across, says that you need to maintain a Jewish majority and Jewish rule and Jewish domination in the land, is racist. I'm saying an end to that. Simply a secular, democratic state, period, for all the people that live on the land and all the people that have their daily lives decided by Israel. Okay. Well, I, I think Amr Zahir, uh, as usual, is uh, is very well spoken, and uh, frankly, it's a it's a kind of privilege to be face to face with you. Uh, but um, first thing. Just as, you know, it was such a beautiful thing. It's like we're all going to be together, I, you know, and I just can't get, figure this out. This part that says that we're scumbags, pigs and bastards. Right. That's like it just, it, it, you know, you, you hear these things where they tell you that in the, you know, in the Palestinian world, in the Arab world, they'll say one thing in one place and another thing in another place. This, this may just be one of those examples where he's like saying to you. Yeah, we're just going to all get along. It's just like, wow, we're going to have like this secular American togetherness in the Middle East. In fact, we're going to have the only democracy in the whole Middle East, 22 Arab countries, 400 million Arabs, not one democracy. But Amr Zahir from Detroit is going to figure out a way to have a secular, which nobody here around in this area is really that secular, but he's going to have a secular democracy. And we're all going to be together because we love each other. In the meantime, those Zionists are scumbags, pigs and uh, ambassadors. So let, let, sorry to interrupt, but let's please keep it on uh, Amir's um, arguments because, you know, it's, he had it, the, time to the speak. Argument, he didn't even, but he, he didn't either, mention your name. Either, he didn't make very a character important. attack. That's or any, because he didn't look into it. Because story. I had, because I, there's no text of me saying anything like this about Palestinians or anybody else. There is no, it doesn't exist. Because I don't talk the way, I don't think that way. But that exists right on his the front of his Twitter. Y Yisha, I um, hear you, but I, that's, I, I that's, think the view I, I think the viewers want to hear why Amir's arguments are wrong rather than just hearing why you don't think he's a good person. I think it's gonna be a much I, more productive and I, discussion. I appreciate your question. We stick to that. The the issue of lying and telling what's really going on behind the scenes is a key issue here in the Middle East. I'm not gonna just address uh, a, an argument in the air. When we understand what's actually happening here, what's happening here is an effort to delegitimize Israel as it is, to replace it with something else. And there are many, there are faces here that are not being shown. And if you, if you want me to take an argument seriously, I have to think to myself, is this person actually has that interest in mind? Or is this a ploy to destroy Israel as a Jewish state, <laughs> replace it with something else? In fact, the, the thing that, that is being represented right now, the, the force that's being represented, just I'll give you just one example. This family that was just evicted from Sheikh Jarrah, right? He said it was in order to make a Jewish settlement. Actually, it's to make an Arab school. That plan has been there on the table since 2017. It's all over the newspapers. You can read it in any newspaper, including the Arab newspapers. Everybody knows that the family that, that was kicked out was kicked out because they were told a long time ago that's not their property and there's going to be an Arab school there. But no, Amr Zahir says, no, it's to make a Jewish settlement. So when you hear that kind of stuff, you think to yourself, wait a minute, before I analyze the merits of the argument, let me understand who's really making it. Maybe there's something more here. Maybe I'm being lied to right to my face. With regard to, with regard to the, the, the argument itself, it's very simple. This is our land. This is our land. And just like Japan, by the way, what other countries have a, a, a right of return? Germany, China, Poland, uh, Italy, 
many countries have a right of return. Many countries are interested in promoting their ethnicity, their family, their group, their tribe. The Middle East understands tribes. There's no democracy in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia, it's controlled by a tribe. The UAE, controlled by different tribes and tribe heads. Everybody understands that. So this thing that you're hearing from Amr Zahir, which is like this, like this American type dream. I mean, if there's a colonialism, if there's if there's a Westernism that's trying to, uh, uh, you know, imp force its colonialist ideas upon us, it's what he's saying right now. Nobody around here does does a democracy for everybody and just vote. And it doesn't work that way. This is tribal lands and this is Jewish tribal land. The Quran recognizes that the New Testament so-called recognizes that the Old Testament, the Torah recognizes that everybody knows that history recognizes that Balfour Declaration recognized that everybody knows that. So this is this is tribal land. This is tribal Jewish land. Uh, actually, Amr Zahir himself is from what we understand is the original Palestinian state, which is uh, Jordan. And that was cut away uh, from uh, the land that was supposed to be part of the Jewish state by the British. Uh, and they created basically a Palestinian state. Uh, it is the original two state solution. And if 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 Amr Zahir wants to get to, back to Jordan and work on the democracy there, there's no democracy there. Of course, uh, there's just a, uh, you know, a, a Bedouin king. Uh, but if he wants to work on that, then Tfadal. You can go over there and, and make that beautiful democracy that you wish for. This happens to be our land, our historic homeland. Yes, there are minorities here. Uh, our job is to make sure that they're uh, well incorporated and have, a, have upward mobility. Uh, I myself am a, uh, uh, I'm a big critic of the Israeli support for the Palestinian Authority, which is the one big sin of Israel that we have this uh, other entity, which is anti-Semitic, corrupt, and also repressive uh, of the Arabs and, and Palestinians. And sadly, uh, I think my country is, is part of that mechanism. Uh, but, but, you know, if, if I could, I would certainly get rid of that immediately, give residency uh, to all the Arabs who are non-jihadist, Palestinians who are non-jihadist, uh, and give them upward mobility in this country. Maybe a pathway to citizenship for those people who prove loyalty. Maybe not. Maybe residency is enough. Uh, there's, many, there's many ways, and I've written about it in the New York Times, five alternatives to the two-state solution. Uh, but in any case, the key, the key to moving forward, though, is goodwill, goodwill. And I'm and and the reason that I was specifically talking about uh, Zahir's writings is because that's the question behind it. Is it really an interest for like a like a state for everybody to live together? Or is it really just a ploy uh, to undermine Israel, to destroy it? And you see that in all of his writings. Uh, you can see it in all of his writings. He says, and we say very proudly that we stand with every resistance against Israel and every resistance against the occupation, whether it's called Hamas or whether it's called Hezbollah. That's from his Facebook page. So we're talking about somebody who right now has given us one version of things, but in another venue will call for the destruction of Israel in toto. I know many Arabs who do want a future with Israel. I don't think I'm listening to one of them right now. Well, uh, I'm not from Jordan. Uh, I was born in Jordan because, once again, my grandparents were kicked out of Yaffa by Zionist forces. This is not complicated, okay? I mean, it's not complicated. I thought I mean, you were from it, Jordan. It, Didn't you just say you're from Jordan? Are we interrupting each other now? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not from Jordan. I was born in Jordan, okay? Uh, there are, um, you know, if if Jews can say that we were from the land of Palestine or Judea or whatever you want to call it, 3,000 or 2,000 years ago, yet you want to deny my right to say because of refuge and war and expulsion, I'm from the land of Palestine 74 years ago, this is pretty rich. I mean, I, I, I'm going to keep using that word, all right? It's really, it's really something. Um, we have not forgotten where we came from. My family has a long history, in the Zahir family has a long history in Nazareth. My mother's family, my mother's mother's family, the Hawadi family, has a very long history in Nazareth. My uh, uh, my grandmother, my dad's mom's family has a long history in Yaffa, and my mom's dad's family has a long history in Akka. That's where we're from. But the truth is, it doesn't matter whether we got there 2,000 years ago or 500 years ago or just one year before the creation of the state of Israel. Uh, Amir, can I just ask you a question? Not to interrupt you, just to ask you a question. Those family members of yours... Uh, you said in in uh, in uh, Jaffa, in Akko, and uh, uh, and in Nazareth, are they still there today? And what is their status? Are they Israeli Arabs with uh, full voting rights? Let me finish what I was saying, then I'll answer that. I'm sorry, question. thank you. Whether whether somebody was kicked out 
or sorry, whether they got to the land 500 years ago or even one year before the state of Israel, uh, the fact that they were expelled from that land, I mean, Yeshai as a lawyer, I'm sure knows this, means they have a right to return to that land. It doesn't matter what their religion is or isn't. It doesn't matter whether or not they got there 500 years ago or 3,000 years ago or one year before the state of Israel. This is pretty simple. Like, I mean, a first year, I teach law students. A first year law student would understand this concept. It doesn't really matter when you bought the house, you can't be kicked out of it um, forcibly and not allow their right to return or compensation. Uh, yes, I have family that still lives within Israel proper who have Israeli citizenship, of course. Mm. Um, they're from there. I mean, uh, uh, good. Uh, uh, 80 years ago, they had a British papers. 120 years ago, they had Ottoman papers. Now they have Israeli papers. Uh, I have an, have an Israeli passport through my mother who was born in Akka in 1954 because she can pass it on to her kids. She can't, under Israeli law, pass it on to my father who is Palestinian. She could have passed it on to him if, he's, if he was Swedish. Well, that's a racist law, isn't it? So again, we have all these clear examples. All I'm saying, and by the way, I don't run away from anything I wrote. Look, Yeshai can sit here and canary mission me for three hours if he wants to. It's fine with me. Well, I, why I is that? Really care. Why is there so much stuff on canary mission on you? I, I don't. Hey, I have. When people ask me for my bio, sometimes I send them my canary mission link. It's a very well done bio of everything, every, <laughs> everything I've ever written. I don't run away from any of that. I can call for secular democracy and one person, one vote and no Eth uh, uh, ethnocracy or theocracy or any sort of racist ideology in the land of Palestine and forcefully denounce Zionism, which has been the reason for my family's refuge, the reason for my people's refuge around the world, the reason that we still have millions of UNRWA registered refugees around the world. Uh, I thought they the were citizens. Time, you know, I thought they were citizens in Israel. You, bro. I'm not interrupting you. I'll wait Just for the checking. moderator to go back. Okay. You can ask me a question when it's your turn again. And sure. so that it's very simple. This is not complicated. Israel's an apartheid state, an apartheid regime. There are roads in the West Bank that Israel can close to non-Jews whenever it feels like it. We know that. It's very clear. They can turn off the lights for power. They can still, you know, even if you want to get into the particularities of Oslo and area and A, area B and area C and all, they still walk into fully Palestinian autonomous areas whenever they want and arrest people. Israel is, is, is undertaking an occupation, uh, a, 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 an illegal occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. If, look, I mean, it sounded like Yeshai said, look, there's no democracies in the Arab world. We shouldn't be a democracy either. Hey, I agree. Israel is not a democracy. All I've been hearing for 74 years is that they're a de democracy flourishing. But you know, they're, if, if Yeshai is agreeing that they're not a democracy, hey, I agree. They're not a democracy. But just to use this sort of, I don't know whether it's internal racism or some weird of, internal external racism to say hey we live in a place where there's no democracies and there's only tribal rule i mean it's really funny how you can use like racist tropes about arabs to justify israel not being de democratic you know hey we live around all these racist tribal people who all they do is kill each other all the time so that's how we have to be too i mean first of all it's not true second of all it's like really racist and third of all what does it have to do when we're simply talking about the borders of this land which is the people look you can try to deny all you want that I'm from there. You So far, you have insulted me, which is fine. I'm used to it, but I'm insulted by much more important people. It's really not a big deal. Second of all, you have all, you, you keep saying, I'm from Detroit. I mean, this is really crazy. I mean, it, it, again, to deny anyone's background, or, or especially if that background comes from the result of expulsion and refugee status, is really ultimately like ridiculous and racist it's very israeli though it's very israeli and zionist to deny that palestinians are from where they're from hey you left your problem not my problem very cute argument not a legal argument not an argument that would be respected among any people of any intellect or scholarship to keep saying that from detroit from jordan this is what this is what zionist zionists do they deny that we're from there again i'm saying you shy? I think your parents came from Russia. I think you moved back to America a little bit when you were a kid. I think even your parents were Fusenics, all that kind of stuff. But hey, you know what? You're from there. I am not denying for a second, no matter, and you can take your roots back as far as you want to. Uh, you're from there. Fine. I'm from there too. 
to keep denying that I'm from there, to keep pretending like Palestinians are not indigenous to that land is racist. And then when you simply say, let's be clear, when Yeshai says this is our land, what he is saying, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, he's saying this is our land and nobody else's. Everyone else is a guest. This is our land, and at the very least, other people might be from here, but our rights are supreme. That's racist. There's th that's, that's exclusionary. That's bigoted. That's discriminatory. Whatever word you want to use for it. Again, I've simply said, everyone be treated equally, a secular democratic state. Yeshai can use Arab world, Middle Eastern racist tropes to say, hey, that's simply not possible in this place of the world. But that, you know, I mean, that's, that's craziness, right? You could have said that about Africa and South Africa. It would have been racist about Africa too. But South Africa is now functioning as it has its problems, but it's functioning as a democracy where people are equal on paper. I'm not even I'm not even talking about saying, hey, give Palestinian, you know, if you live in 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 Baqa in West Jerusalem, which your house is it's clear from your house that it was built by Arabs and you invaded it. I mean, the arches and the and the marble and all that. We know that Arabs installed those things, and you're a Jewish family living there because you you didn't pay for that house in 1948. Your Jewish family living there. I'm not even saying that everyone who did that has to go. No, stay. Everyone stay. Let's 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 create reconciliation, but it has to be reconciliation based on justice and democracy and the dignity of human beings, not based on this is our land, not your land. Your guests here at best you'll be treated like a respected minority. Democracy doesn't work like that. Right. If okay, I'm right. You, 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 you had a, you had a long, you had a long run. Can real quick, you, real, real quick, you uh, First of all, first area of common ground. You both agree that Israel is not a democracy. So there we go. We we accomplished something today. Um, what what we're going to do, Kazisha, you asked Amir uh, a series of questions. I, I I actually like the concept of you both being able to ask each other questions. So what we're going to do is, Yisha, you can now respond. Amir will then get a response, and then we're going to go into a phase of this discussion where you can each ask, ask each other questions, and then we're going to take it to audio, audience questions. Wonderful. Wonderful. First thing is, uh, uh, Amir, uh, you said a few times your, your family are refugees, and yet at the same time you said, actually, I got a lot of family living in Israel, and I'm an Israeli, I have an Israeli passport. So you're not really a refugee. Your folks, I think, probably just chose to live in America to make a life for themselves. I have a beautiful quote for you from you that says, I came to America uh, with literally no money in my pocket, no education. I couldn't speak the language. And look at me now. America is such a great country. So basically, you could live in Israel. You could live in Palestine, but you choose not to. Now, why is that important? Why do I keep harping on this point? I'll tell you why. Because if you were out there uh, where you are, and you were uh, talking about normalization, an effort to, to get Jews and, and Palestinians and Arabs around here to a better future, I'd be like, okay, look, there's a guy. He's got roots in this land, and he wants it to be better. But what do I see? Uh, other than the fancy talk that you're giving here, I see the amount of hate that you spew against Israel. I see that you call over and over against normalization. You say it all the time. You say, do not go to normalization. With regard to Israelis, what you say that we're indigenous also, here in, in your Twitter, you say Israelis are foreign occupiers. No discussion can begin without the stubborn truth. So the, my point to you is the reason I'm upset about the fact that you're outside of the land is because to me, I'm like, you have no skin in the game. You get no skin in the game. The people here on the ground, the people that I meet with monthly, regularly to try to make a better life for them, Jews, Palestinians, settlers, and, and it's the so-called West Bank, Judeans in, 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 in the homeland, working with Arabs who want to move forward, who want education for their kids. They look at you and they think to themselves, this guy wants to stop this process of normalization. You want, they want, to, you, you want to stop the process of us working together, moving forward together towards a better future. You, you don't want that. You want conflict. You want conflict. Whatever this, this stuff that you're saying now about a secular state altogether, it's all a ruse. What you want is endless conflict and you will not face any of the fire. Why don't you, why don't, here's my first question to you. Why don't you show us what's on your shirt right now? Why don't you show us what Palestine looks like? Why don't you show us? Because I think that your shirt that you're wearing right now says it all. You've got a vision for Palestine. This is the Palestine that you're going to talk about at every rally. It is remarkably similar to the state of Israel. 
it's just this almost the same borders. It's just so familiar. And yet it's got a totally different flag, a totally different thing. Because what you really want to do, why don't you just come out and say it? Why don't you just be honest about it? You want to erase Israel. Say it. Say, here's the map of Palestine. I'm an enemy of Israel. I want to erase that so-called Jewish state. It's racist. It's all that. Although, of course, uh, you know, a, a, again, I, I made the point many times, which is it's a national state. There is such a thing as national states. You just deny. You're making it look like you're, you, it's a joke, right? Because it's like it's like you, you you represent Palestine, which is going to be exactly that. It wants to be uh, a, 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 a Jewishly cleansed, an ethnic cleansing machine of a, of a Palestinian national state. But you call for the secular democracy and all that. There's no secular democracy around here. But the real Palestine that you want, show us. Show us the map that's on your shirt. Why don't you just sit up a little bit? Show us what, what, what Palestine looks like in your mind. Is it in the West Bank in Gaza or something like that? Or where is it exactly? All right, so I'm 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 not uh, I'm not someone at a checkpoint as you have an M16. I won't be at every your every beck No, and you're a law professor in Detroit. Pressure. You're all right. Don't worry about it. Just show us so, your shirt. So yes, I believe in the end of Zionism. Yes, mm -hmm. I believe in. I'm not ashamed to say that. Yes, I believe good, in the good. end of a state that is based on, you know, if you're a certain religion or race, you get more rights. Yes, I believe in the end of that. I believe. I'm not ashamed of that. But I you're believe, for Hamas and Hezbollah Palestine. No, right? I'm actually a secular person. I'm not, I don't, I I would not, if 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 there was an election tomorrow in a free state, I would, and there was parliamentary, I can tell you, I would not be voting for Hamas. I would not be voting for, I mean, Hezbollah's Lebanese anyway, but I wouldn't be voting for them if they had a party inside of Palestine. That's not my ideology. Um, uh, ultimately, again, you can keep, you can, you know, it, it it's, Just it's show me really, your shirt. I asked you to show us the it's shirt. Really, okay? I'm, I'm not your little puppy to do whatever you want me to do. No, Again, you wore, you wore it you on think, the show today. I, know I don't you think, think anything. I, I respect you, you a lot. I just want you to show your truth. I, 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 I think you, we could we could put the shirt argument aside. I mean, the shirt is the is the entire land from the river to the sea, which he would like it to not be a Jewish state. He'd been he'd been clear about yes, that. Yes, and I'm and I'm and I don't want it to be a Muslim state, and I don't want it to be a Christian state, and I don't want it to be a state that says Arabs get more rights. I don't want it to be any kind of state that mm -hmm. says one group of people gets more rights than anybody else. You know, ultimately, you know, the this continued sort of and it just if if you're if you're listening, I, I hope you're seeing the theme that Yeshai keeps going back to, which is he and he did it again. He said, I have no skin in the game. I mean, imagine, imagine the the the, the nerve this takes, right? This the, the denial of history this takes. Um, my father is an UNRWA registered refugee to this day. There are three, or sorry, hundreds of thousands of UNRWA registered refugees, which you can try to deny that they're from Palestine if you want in Lebanon, but they're not. They're from Palestine. To say they have, you're saying they have no skin in the game. They are not allowed to return. Allow them to return and they'll have a skin in the game. Could I go live there if I wanted to? Yes, but my work, because as a result, of refuge of my father. And I mean, you know, this is not complicated to say, hey, when someone's family becomes refugees and they become kicked out, kicked, kicked out of their land, they end up somewhere else and their descendants end up in that place working too. That's what happened to Jews when they were Jews in the fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and whatever centuries could have, there were no borders at that time. They could have gone wherever they want. They stayed where their family was expelled to or refuge to. This is normal. I mean, again, for Yeshai to say these utterly racist things, to say like no skin in the game. I mean, what it's ridiculous to deny that? it just is racist. It's to not deny racist. You're like, you just don't have skin in the game. It's racist. racist. To deny not everything from, is racist. It's not it's like the word smurf that you deny, can stick into everything. Uh, it's let's... racist to deny someone's history. Of course, we have a history in that land. You can keep pretending like it's not true. But I, I never said anything to the contrary. I even talked that, about Isha, your family. Isha, Isha, please, but please, but, please, but again, this is this goal keeps amounting back to personal attacks about family. If you know, I'm not making any of those personal attacks against you about your family, which also has a you know, let's say a different history than you do with the way that it looks at Zionism. I looked you up, but when I look at the family, I go, this is not something to have in an actual intellectual debate. Yes, my mother was born an Israeli citizen. My father, my father was a Palestinian refugee. They met in California when they were both studying in the 70s. And so that then that creates, then they immediately get involved and enveloped in the Israeli system, which says that because she married my father, she cannot confer citizenship upon him, and therefore they cannot live there. If he were Swedish, she could. That's racist. 
That's try to be a G- try works. to be a Jew in one of the Arab countries. Okay, do me a favor. Israel Again, is a tiny you, defensive bringing- defensive national state. We are an ethnic national state defending our minority in this tough region. And if you can't understand that, you throw around you know, apartheid, apartheid, racism. Come on, get off it already. Not everything is 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 George Washington uh, and and Lincoln. Um, the Middle East is a tough region of, of ethnic peoples. This is our ethnic national borders to protect our tribe. That's the way things work around here. And you're trying to like, you know, throw it a flowery thing as though as though the world works on, on, on American principles. It doesn't around here. And when you talk like that, it just makes you sound like exactly what you are, just a person who's detached from the event, from the area or a person who's just playing on liberal ideologies in order to get what, to get what you really want, which is to get rid of the Jewish state in total. Oh, I don't want a state based on ethnicity. Yeah, well, what about the rest of the 22 Arab countries around us? That's the way it works around here. And you are the one who made it sound like it's something bad. I didn't say it was bad. I respect the fact that there are tribal regions. I respect the fact that people work in different modes other than, you know, uh, 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 democracy developed uh, in, in the American continent or, or, or in France. Yes, things work a little bit different here in, in the Middle East, and we are here to defend our ethnic minority. We were ethnically cleansed from all the Arab countries. We continue to be ethnically cleansed in this land wherever the Palestinian Authority rules, including in Nablus Shechem, including uh, on the Temple Mount, including in, in Hebron and in Gaza. We, we are continuously ethnically cleansed by your war machine, and you are nothing but a front for that war machine, a liberal front for that war machine. And I want you to just drop it. Tell the truth. Show what you really want. Show what you say all the time. Zionists are pigs. We got to get rid of them. Here's the map of Palestine. That's who you are. That's what you really represent. So don't do me this, you know, don't give me this, this sad song about, about uh, your parents were, were, were ethnically cleansed and, 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 and you grew up as a, it, you have, here's an, art, here's an article about you. Your quote saying, when you grew up, you didn't know anything about Palestine. You grew up thinking you were a white kid. Your parents didn't tell you you're Palestinian. Later on, you went to camp and somebody radicalized you. Fine, I respect that. But like, do me a favor, okay? Represent what you really are, which you're, you're an enemy to Israel in toto. You don't believe in the right of a Jewish state at all. You want an Arab state here. It doesn't matter to you if it's secular, democratic, or this and that. You want to get rid of us. You hate Zionists. They're pigs. They're bastards, etc. Fine. Call it the way it is. And that's all I'm asking you to do. Just call it the way it is. Show your map. Show what you believe the future should look like. And, and okay, because I do believe that there are ways f- uh, uh, towards, towards normalization and peace in the future. It's just not with people like you. It's people like the Abraham Accords, the UAE, people who respect our ethnic rights in this place, understand that, that Israel is indeed uh, a, a protectorate, uh, a, a ethnic national state, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way things work around here. I- Thanks, Yish. I, I feel like we're uh, just we're, we're not covering new ground anymore. Um, Amr, because Yishai did have the floor first. If you do want to respond, I, I will give you that time. If not, then we will move to questions. You can have the option to ask each other questions or we can move to audience questions. No, I don't have any questions for him and I don't have any response. Listen, I hope people are listening and listening to, again, this vision of Palestinians being second-class citizens under a Jewish state. That's what he's arguing for. And I'm not arguing for that. And if people, he can keep going back to things I wrote. I don't run away from anything that I wrote. I don't run away from my t-shirts. I don't run away from my beliefs that yes, Zionism is racism and a Jewish state is in essence, and by definition, racist, especially given the idea what in a Muslim state would be racist if it said non-Muslims get less rights, anything like that. Is Japan racist, racist? especially when you have, again, millions of people walking this earth who are clearly from there. Yeshai doesn't want them to go back to where they're from. That is a that is so funny for a Zionist to say, especially since Zionism is based on the idea that we're going back to where we're from. Well, I'm saying as human beings, that same right should be conferred among uh, uh, sorry, sorry, conferred to Palestinians. But I, I'm happy to move on to the audience. I, you know, I'm not going to back and forth with Yashai. Frankly, I feel like, you know, I don't, I'm, I, we, you might have lost a little control here. I'm, I'm no, happy I, to go I, to the questions from the audience. I feel like you both had ample time to, to present your visions for the state. I think it's actually been a very uh, entertaining and, and enlightening conversation for many. Chat seems to be excited about what's going on. Um, so, chat, start asking questions. We're going to prioritize super chats obviously, but we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. I guess I'll start with, I'm going to pose what I would say is a critique of both your visions. Um, 
and perhaps a, a, a different way of looking at things. And then you can both respond. And in the meantime, we'll be getting questions from chat. So, um, Yisha, in terms of your your vision for one Jewish state from the river to sea, um, and I'm not going to make an argument in terms of uh, justice or equality because I, because I know that's that doesn't appeal to you. Um, your argument has been made very clear, but you present it as a, a strong state, right? The land being whole is strong, but to me, when I when I hear of a of a demographic of around 30 percent, perhaps more, who doesn't have representation in government, that doesn't sound like strength. That sounds like an extremely fragile. Uh, country one where one which is ripe for uprising whether peaceful or, or violent it doesn't seem like that is the kind of nation which uh is secure it sounds like that will perhaps be the easiest clearest way to uh, end the jewish state it's mm -hmm. almost like those who want one secular democratic state should hope that israel annexes the entire land and makes it a jewish state for hopes of some kind of uprising to end the the jewish state um, right. And I'll, I'll give you I just want to give a critique of Amir's vision and then you can both respond. And Amir, you know, the ideal of one secular democratic state as a secular Jew, that it, it very much speaks to me from a certain perspective. But on the other hand, most Palestinians don't want a secular democratic state. Uh, polling shows that most of them want some form of Sharia law to, to be involved. So it, it, it seems like an idea an ideal that is not taking into consider consideration what Palestinians actually want. And furthermore, and this is a critique of any form of, of one state solution, that you have two distinct populations living on the land who have been in conflict with one another for over 100 years. It seems like any type of competition over demographic control of one political system would end in disaster. So it seems like we should find a way in which both people can have their own self-determination in a way that's not infringing on the rights of the other population and perhaps over time we can build one state but it will have to be after generations of reconciliation so i think we should look in terms of a confederation or federation to, to achieve something of that sort um and with that i'm happy to hear your thoughts on on, on that well i i wanted to really a chance to to talk about uh how things can work um there really are there democracy or democratic principles. I don't like the word democracy because I think it like forces you into a straitjacket. But democratic principles, which really the, the better word is is principles of liberty, uh, are really part of the Israeli ethos. Uh, and sometimes that gets us in trouble. Uh, and I, I agree. I agree with myself, and, and I agree that I was happy that that the, that Amr heard clearly that I said, yeah, Israel is not. It's not meant to be a democracy. It's meant to be. Uh, and a, a national state of the Jewish people. But you're totally right, uh, Adar, that there are a huge minority of people. I have a Middle East parable for Arab Palestinians living in Israel. I call it the, it's a very Middle Eastern parable. It's called the Mashal of the Trempist, the parable of the hitchhiker. And what I mean by that is the following. I actually pick up hitchhikers all the time. Uh, and when I pick up hitchhikers, I want them to be comfortable. And I want them to be safe. And I want them to get to their destination comfortably and safely. But if that hitchhiker says to me, hey, can I take the steering wheel? I say, whoa, 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 whoa. That's th that you've overstepped your bounds because I'm not giving you the steering wheel of this car. We Jewish people were an ethnic minority in this region, a Semitic minority, an ethnic minority. Um, and we understand the Arab world. We have a very similar language, almost identical genetics, uh, similar religion. We really know each other from a long time ago. Uh, although in his writings, uh, Amir calls us, you know, foreigners and occupiers. That, of course, is one of the great anti-Semitic anti tropes of our time to say the Jews are foreigners in the land of Israel. Um, so we have this little ethnic state. Now, we want the minorities living in our country to be like the hitchhiker, safe, comfortable, and reach their goal and, and have upward mobility safely and comfortably. But to take the wheels of the state, take the steering wheel of the state, that's where I get nervous. That's where I say, well, I think you might undermine, try to undermine the Jewish state. And we're actually seeing that happen right now uh, with some of the jihadist members of the uh, of the governing coalition, as strange as that, as that may sound. Uh, so how, how do you find a middle ground where you're giving people rights and opportunities? And this is what Arabs tell me all the time. Unlike what Amr says, Arabs tell me all the time how they want normalization how they want a blue identity card, how they want the protection of Israel from the PA, 
which tortures them uh, and, 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 and is corrupt. Just, just two weeks ago, I sat with a group of Arabs. They explained to me what happens when you get arrested by the PA. The PA charges you. They say you have to relinquish your weapon, but you're like, I don't have a weapon. So you got to go to a weapons dealer and he sells you a gun for 60 a thousand shekel and then you hand that gun over to the pa that's how you get out of jail that's a get out of jail card okay it's like crazy stuff that they face over there not to mention the 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 the, the silence the silencing of of their basic you know freedom of speech which by the way you know the what's called the intrafada you don't hear people like i'm ever complain about the 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 incredible uh, uh, uh oppression that palestinians face under the pa and the hamas in any case, so how do you how do you get to some place where you're giving people representation? Because what you said, Adar, is right. People do need representation. But what kind of representation is a democratic representation? You know, the Arab world, the Palestinian world, Muslim Palestinian world, they have a whole system of elders and this thing called a diwan, which is which is like a meeting once a month of the elders. They make decisions. You could get ostracized if you if you do something against the chiefs and the elders. It's a whole very beautiful, very thought out system. Okay. How do you give that representation? Well, uh, Professor Kedar came up with this idea that there would be uh, these city states, right? These these little, like for example, Hebron and Ramallah would have self governance, self rule. You would have uh, uh, it would be an Arab speaking city with Arab legal uh, uh, atmosphere there, and the whole thing would be Arab Muslim thing or Christian if it's in Bethlehem and other places. Um, and they would have, and people would have representation within that city, but it would still be under Israel. It would just be kind of like a Chinatown ruling itself uh, within New York or, or or Toronto or San Francisco. It's that kind of atmosphere. Like, okay, you got self rule in here. Another way is that they would have some kind of representation. For example, Puerto Ricans uh, do not vote for president of the United States, but they do vote for senators and congressmen. But they are non-voting senators and congressmen, so they do have representation. But that those representatives don't sway the country for whatever reason puerto rico is outside of the system right uh there are there are ways creative ways ways that give people an opportunity uh to be represented and i agree with you we wouldn't want a situation where they wouldn't be represented but all that is predicated upon something which is very much lost today which is actually following the law we have right now a completely like this discussion about apartheid that's not what's happening in israel what's happening is actually an Islamicization, a Palestinianization of Israeli Arabs, theft, unstoppable land theft in the Negev, uh, Palestinianization and radicalization of East Jerusalem Arabs, including places like East Sawi and Sheikh Jarrah, uh, land theft, of course, in Judea and Samaria, uh, in Area C, not to mention the, 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 the control of the PA, the corrupt and, and uh, ethnically cleansing Palestinian authority in areas A and B. And so we're not really facing right now a problem of giving. I, I'm I am facing the problem of trying to give more Arabs upward mobility. But in in the same time, as I'm working on that, and people like myself are working like that, what's really happening is actually uh, a jihadism, a land theft, uh, an anti-Israelism, and we saw that with the burning of ten. Jewish synagogues in the last conflict. So we're really dealing with is an internal conflict. There's going to be a blow up here. And, uh, and there's not this, this business that Amr is, is offering us, this idea of a secular uh, a state for all. It's just a pipe dream. It has nothing to do with reality. It's, it's just to blind uh, liberals and make them feel like somebody's uh, some Arab is talking the way that they want to hear it. That's not the reality around here. The, the reality is that, that Hamas is the leading uh, spirit around here. And, 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 and it suppresses Arabs who want normalization and want opportunity for a future with Israel. So I say first step is to push back on the jihad. And second thing is to figure out a way to give decent Arabs who want to live within our Jewish national state and want upward mobility and opportunity and representation uh, a, a way to do that. I would, by the way, also consider a uh, um, pathway to citizenship, but only per that person, meaning to say that wouldn't be passed on uh, automatically to children. Rather, every child at 18, non-Jewish child who wants to be part of the Jewish state of Israel as a minority would have to prove anew that they're non-jihadist, that they are willing uh, to, to, to live with Israel. These things that I'm offering are real. They are on the ground. They are what people on the ground want. What you're hearing from the other side are not real things. They're just pipe dreams at best case scenario, worst case scenario cover for something completely different. Uh, so there are ways in, uh, uh, towards a better future. You can read it in my article in the New York Times. It's called A Settler's View of Israel's Future. And uh, and there is definitely hope for people who want hope. Thanks, Yishai. Uh, 
Um, um, Eric, the, the, the floor is yours. I will read a super chat, which essentially it just it, it almost summarizes uh, the, the critique I gave. It's from Or Khalamish. Thank you so much. Um, are you not worried about you are promoting a Yugoslavia solution and just promoting the creation of another, another civil war in a one state reality? Well, um, I'll answer that question uh, in a bit. Um, sure. I'm sure everybody saw Yaakov over the summer, right? You know who I'm talking about? Yaakov in Jerusalem, who's living in the Kurds' house, who came out and told the Manal Kurd quite um, inarticulately, though honestly, uh, if I don't steal it, somebody else will. What we're hearing from Yashai is a much more um, articulate and intelligent version of this, right? Is every argument that Yashai has made is predicated on the idea of Jewish supremacy in the land. He says, well, if there's decent Arabs, you don't have to be decent to get rights, by the way. That's the way rights work, okay? But anyway, if there's decent Arabs, they can get citizenship. People can have residency. Uh, there can be some autonomous places. We have names for these kinds of things, okay? They were called Bantu stands in South Africa. We have names <laughs> for systems where one group of people gets 100% of the rights and another group of the people gets, you know, 75% of the rights. We have a name for that. It's called Jim Crow. When you want to separate people based on their race, we have names for these things, okay? Uh, it, this Nothing that he's saying is novel. It's happened before in Jim Crow America and apartheid South Africa. What he's also saying has happened to the, the, the indigenous Native Americans He's basically talking about putting us onto reservations where, okay, you have some autonomy there and if, and, and okay, but w when it really comes down to it, and he said very openly, you can't drive the car. Well, okay, when the car is the channels of government, well, we have a name for those things. That's called apartheid. It's called Jim Crow. It's called, Ra everything he said is based on the idea of Jewish supremacy in the land. I, I don't really have anything to say. I've made my arguments. I just want people to understand that, that everything that the rabbi has, has, has advocated for is predicated upon Jewish supremacy. Now, whether that means Jews have more, I don't know. He can explain what that means. Does that mean Jewish life is more valuable? Does that mean Jews have more, should under the state get more rights that, you know, only a Jew can ever be the leader of the nation? Look, this might be all fine and dandy if Israel came to a place where there weren't other people and there weren't non-Jews. But guess what? It did come to a place where there were other people. And those other people were kicked out. They have a right to return. The ones that still live there have a right to be treated equally, not based on whether or not they're Jews or not Jews. Everything that he has advocated for, quite articulately, quite intelligent, quite liberally, actually, has been based on the idea that Jews are supreme to non-Jews in the land of Israel. Okay. It's it's very clear, you know, not even going back to the deny, again, continuing to deny, using me as an example, because I'm right here in front of him, but continuing to deny basically that Palestinians are not from Palestine, or once they leave, they no longer have any rights, I mean, this is ridiculous. No serious, definitely no serious legal scholarship, but no, no serious person who looks at the basic values of human rights and, 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 and democracy with a small d would look at this with any seriousness. At the end of the day, look, you cannot deny that Palestine, the land of Palestine, was extremely important, the center of Jewish life, for a very long time. You can also not deny that the land of Palestine has been the center of Palestinian Arab life for a very, very long time as well. Once you get into the business of ranking the claims to the land, I mean, do you want me to go back and say I'm Canaanite? Does that make me now older than the Jews? And I can, I mean, it's ridiculous. So once, once you start ranking the claims to the land, you're going to get into a very messy process that is going to result in probably ending up being and sounding really racist one way or another. I mean, Yeshai wants to play this game where he says, look, I think that Jews should have the power at the very top 
Uh, they should drive the car in his terms. Other people can ride in the car, but they should drive the car. But hey, that's not that's not racist. I mean, that's just you know, hey, that's just the way it is. I mean, no, it's racist. It's it's Jewish supremacy in the land of Palestine. Every single uh, um, uh, uh, thing that he said that he advocated for was based on that idea. That's what I want the audience to understand. As far as the question about Yugoslavia, look, there have been examples like Yugoslavia in the world. There have been examples other places in the world where there are multinational secular uh, democracies. America, it's not perfect, but we do finally, and it didn't get there till a very long time. I mean, it took all the way until 1965 when they did away with Jim Crow, but that that's an example, okay? Uh, uh, South Africa, which just stopped apartheid in 1994. There have not been, they have not broken out into a civil war between white people and black people. There's difficulties, but it has not broken out into mass violence. Um, so, I mean, you can look at that example. You can look at examples of success too, historically, if we're being fair in that way. But so, again, you know, Yashai can do his best to paint Palestinians as sort of murderous, Jew-hating, jihadists, and that's all we think about and talk about all the time. I mean, if that were actually true, if that's actually who we were, then look, there's millions of Palestinians around the world that live everywhere. A, a synagogue was attacked the other day in Texas. It wasn't a Palestinian. It wasn't even an Arab. Um, synagogues are shot up in America far too often, and it's disgusting when it ever happens. 90% of the time, it's a white guy. I mean, that's just not who we, we don't go around seeking Jews to kill as much as Yeshai wants to put that fear into everybody that that's what we, it's just not the way we conduct our daily lives. We conduct mm. our daily lives by trying to succeed, by trying to succeed wherever we are, becoming doctors, lawyers, professors, excuse me, <coughs> successful business people, whatever it is, that we're trying to live our life. And just because we've been pretty successful in living that life, I mean, Palestinians have been pretty successful around the world. Doesn't mean we forego our claims to our homeland and our claims to our history. That's who we are and where we're from. We're not going to forget that. Listen, Ben Gurion said the old would die and the young would forget. And this has been a trope that Palestinians have used to encourage ourselves for a long time. Well, we didn't forget. And by the way, Jews didn't forget. If Jews didn't forget where they come, sorry. If Jews didn't forget where they, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. If Jews didn't Bless you. forget where the, I think there's some Israeli flies. Maybe they're they're putting uh, uh, um, allergens yep. on, me on purpose. Yeshai, did you yep. send allergens into my house to make me start sneezing? It's a startup it fly, startup nation flies. It wasn't Yeshai, it was the Mossad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. uh, ulti ultimately, um, with the Talmud in its hand, <laughs> ultimately, Palestinians are um, from this. From that land, it doesn't matter. We can you can keep saying they left somewhere. They don't have skin in the game. It's ridiculous, and frankly, it's racist to deny our history. If Jews didn't forget where they come three thousand years ago, then we're not going to forget where we came from seventy five years ago. We're going to keep fighting for that history and equality in our land. There are people, and this is what's funny: there are Palestinians who are way more, if you wanted to use the term extreme, way more extreme than me. That would walk into any debate with Israelis and say every settler, and they would consider people living in Herzliya and Yaffa settlers too, everyone's got to, they all got to go back right. to Europe, back to wherever they came from, and everyone's got to leave, and that's the only form of justice. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that everyone can stay, Palestinian refugees should be allowed to return, and you have a secular democratic state. Will there be difficulties where there'll be par uh, parties on either side? I mean, Yeshai will be the party on the Jewish side that reject that sort of resolution. Sure, of course there will be. I would condemn them if they did that. But let's get to a point where we can be building on that instead of building on what Yeshai wants to build on, which is Jewish supremacy in the land of Palestine. I'm, I'm not for that. I'm not for Arab supremacy there. I'm not for Muslim supremacy there. I come from a Christian dad and a Muslim mom. Okay, I'm not religious. I don't. I don't. None of that stuff even really appeals to me. But I know I'm from there. Okay, I know I'm from there. And I, and Yeshai can deny that to my face all he wants. But I know I'm from there, and I know my family history, and I know that we have as much right, not more, but as much right as anyone else. And frankly, for Yeshai to keep denying that and to base his arguments on Jewish supremacy over and over and over again, I just hope the audience is listening clearly. 
Adar, can I have a second to uh, retort on that? Yep, I just want us to keep it um, concise we'll keep it tight. because I do want to get to. We'll some keep more it concise. Yeah. I, I want I want the uh, audience to recall point number two that I made at the onset of uh, this discussion. I said there's such a thing called nationalism. Uh, there are nation states. Uh, there are many nation states in this world. Japan is a nation state. Uh, Hungary is a nation state. Poland is a nation state. Now, what what Amr is doing is a trick that only works on Americans. If you're living in, in Hungary and Poland and, and Japan, you're like, what is this guy talking about? The, the, of course we are. Are, are Japanese supremacists on the Japanese islands? <laughs> yeah, they think it's their land. And therefore, they're going to run it the way that they think it should be run. Same thing with the Hungarians and the Poles. People, the word supremacist is just a tricky word. What it means is this is the tribe, the family, the group of people, the ethnicity that lives in this part of the uh, of the world. And this land, the historic land, is that they, they control it. They have their calendar, their language, uh, their culture, the, their their history. And that is all over the world. These these If he went in to this with this spiel to the king of Jordan or the king of Saudi Arabia or even Sisi in, in Egypt, they would all laugh him out of the room. They're like, what are you talking about? These are tribal lands and we run it in tribal ways. And, and we're not here to grant everybody equality. And the 22 Arab countries around us, 400 million Arabs, nobody talks this way. So it's an American. So if anything, just on just on the simplest level, this is, this is colonialism. You are listening to uh, a, a Palestinian, uh, Jordanian, Palestinian, whatever it is, God bless you. Uh, in, in law school in America, spieling, telling us in the Middle East that we should run it like, like we do in America. As we say in Hebrew, tova. do me a favor. Okay. Second thing I, I want to say is that uh, I, I have never said that all Palestinians are terrorists. I said that we have a movement, uh, a jihadist movement, sadly, but there's a counter movement. You, I think, aid the jihadist movement that wants to get rid of Israel, as opposed to me, who works with Arabs all the time, you don't have to tell me that not all Arabs are terrorists. I know, because I work in Hebron. Uh, I, I work with Arabs. I, I have close relationships with Arabs. Arabs are part of my uh, ceremonies. I was in a niftar meal uh, uh, in, in the Arab section of, of, of Hebron, and it was uh, catered glad kosher. But you would, you're against that. Because you're against normalization. That's what you write. You may not say it here, but say you haven't said it one time here. But you say it in all your speeches that you have to stop normalization. You have to stop this thing. And you even wrote, if you're going to engage in a discourse like this, it's going to be in order to just show Israel as racist, not to come to a place of, of, of normalization. And I want to make one last point, which is I believe in Palestinian rights in the land of Israel. It's called civil rights. Civil rights, but not necessarily national rights. Rights to your property, rights to freedom of speech, right? All the things. But the state... Uh, and, and here's the last point. The state is Jewish. And here's the point. You said that what I described as Bantustans or reservations, you're right. Except that it's our reservation. We are the Ind American Indians in this big America region. Meaning to say the Jews are a small ethnic minority that's been uh, uh, persecuted in this region. And we now have a small reservation. And as you know, because of your legal scholarship, you know that on the reservation, it's not exactly American law. It's actually reservation law and something different. So on the reservation, you can have gambling, et cetera, et cetera, because the, the federal laws and, and the state laws don't really count. And so that's exactly it. We actually have a small Jewish reservation in the Arab world. We are the autonomy. We are the protectorate. And we're not going to allow that small protectorate, that small reservation to be undermined either by jihadism or by secular liberalism, which you espouse to, to, to promote. Uh, that's the thing that we're not going to allow. And we're going to allow minority with, we are the minority. And within the, our minority in this region, there's another minority, which is Palestinians. Some of them are non-jihadist. Some of them want normalization. Some want um, upward mobility. And the Jewish state will provide it for those people who want to live as law-abiding citizens uh, in the Jewish state. I mean, you know, again, it, it, he says civil rights, but he says civil rights without citizenship, civil rights without, you know, full voting rights. I mean, it, again, it, it, it's it's Jim Crow. I just hope people are listening. That's all. Again, and again, it's a denial of Palestinian ind indigeneity to that land. He, this is a very common Zionist argument, by the way, to always push out this this push to to widen the focus and say, hey. There's all these Arab states. It would be like kicking somebody out of Oklahoma and say, hey, just go move to this other white place over here in Texas um, because, hey, they're white too, right? It doesn't work like that. 
Okay, people have roots in the land that they're from, and uh, we are from Palestine. It doesn't really matter what other countries are around us as far as we're concerned about our history and where we're from. I mean, and Yashai can keep saying, hey, it's it, and again, it's a very Orientalist sort of racist anti-Arab trope to say, hey, all those Arabs are the same. You can just go live over there. Well, no, we don't want to. We want to live where we're from. And we don't want to live with half the rights as you, Yashai. We would like to have the same rights as everybody. And again, as it's 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 I'm sure that the people watching are very clear on what Yashai has been saying. I'm not reading the comments too much, but I'm sure people are very clear on what Yashai is espousing is again Jewish supremacy in the land, everything he said is based on that, based on, he's saying, we as Jews were from there, which I agree with. And then, but he goes on to say, but nobody else really is. At least nobody else has as much of a claim as we do. And I, from what I understand from the beginning, and the Bible is what gives us a claim stronger than any religion. God is what gives us a claim stronger than anybody else. Look, and he talks about nationalism. Again, we, we have had a long tradition in this world of, yes, nationalisms exist, but we have a long tradition of this world in critiquing nationalisms that also function and are based on an idea that ejects indigenous people. We've had that conversation in America very clearly. We've had that conversation about Australia very clearly. And we're having that conversation about Israel. If you want to talk about other kinds of nationalisms around the world, show me how they compare to Israel in the, in the sense of displacing and replacing the indigenous people with fine, another indigenous people, if you want to say that, that's fine. But still, I mean, again, this consistent rejection of Palestinian indigeneity. And then and then to say, again, that listen, Yeshai is being very open about it. And I hope people are listening. Yeshai is being very open. Says He's saying very clearly, I believe Jews should have more rights and more a higher status in the state. That's racist. It doesn't really matter how you cut it. What, what, I, I, I'm a please, for, for God's sakes, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, 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 I've challenged you on this like 10 times. You can't keep equating nationalism with racism because then half the world would be racist, certainly the Arab countries and many other things. And there's so many places that are national states. By the way, we, we haven't had an opportunity to talk about another place which you were born in, which is which is Jordan, which is really a 80 percent Palestinian state. And uh, in 1923, that land was cut away from what was going to be Israel. And it was really meant to be uh, the Palestine, uh, the original two state solution. That That country needs a lot of love, a lot of care. Uh, there's a lot of complaints about the economy, the water situation there, the lack of democracy. Uh, I, I really wish that 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 great activists and and, and pretty smart folks like yourself uh, would take upon yourself to uh, look. You may not get Palestine. It, it turns out because we're not leaving our Jewish connection to this place. Allah has given us strength. It's it's sad to me that as a Palestinian activist, you you don't believe in God. It kind of it kind of, you know, like, it, you know, I didn't, it, say, end, I, didn't say, I didn't say I don't believe in God. I oh, said okay, I'm good. not a religious okay. person. Good. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. So, so then I'm, I'm happy to hear, you know, because we're all children of God and children of Abraham here. You, you, you have you have both sides. You, you got a Christian side and a Muslim side. So you, you got a strong Abraham. Yeah, ne neither neither side, which you believe should get as much rights as you do inside. Israel. Absolutely. Because it's our this is our tribal lands. It's very simple. If you would speak like a tribal person instead of a instead of I'm a, not a you know, tribal Thomas, person. Right, well, you're a Thomas Jefferson believes... a colonialist giving us the spiel about about, Again, about the Constitution he, in the he, Middle he, East. Are people, Nobody are people, here are people listening. Palestine. I mean, this is really rich. Palestinians second, are the second, I, I wanted to finish up about Jordan. Jordan really could use your why, help. Why are you talking uh, about Jordan? I'm not from Jordan. I, I, first thing, you were born in Jordan. Don't say you're not from Jordan. Second yeah, thing, I was Jordan, born in Jordan because my dad was a UN yeah, refugee. That's right. And yes, kicked yes, out of Yaffa. Uh, my yes, dad yes, is yes, from yes. Yaffa and, 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 our, and our, I understand. Guys, I understand. I, we're, we're, we're no, you don't we're, understand. I mean, if I understand. if I say you're from Russia, you would probably reject that, right? I'm not from Russia. I was born in in Israel, but you're right. right. Are your parents, parents are from, from Russia? Russia? Yeah, my parents are from Russia. That's right. Yeah, they're Russian. Uh, but I'm not Russian, uh, no, no, and your, they were your always. Your parents are Russian. They were always treated as an other. And the Palestinians are the people living in Jordan. Do you deny that Jordan is a type of Palestinian you must, state? I, I, that eighty percent of the people there self-identify as strongly the history of Palestinians in Jordan, or other places. But again, this is not a show uh, about Jordan. 
this is the show. Can, if I understood I, it correctly, that, when the moderator your side, invited your, me to the show, your, your side of the show, let's, let's, about I'm here, your side of quick. the show may not be about Jordan, but I think Jordan is part of the solution. I talking, think we should talk about Jordan about as vision, a Palestinian state. Talking about visions it. for Palestine. It's it's an I alternative. Have, I have guys, Jordan guys, is guys, an alternative. It's I have it quite becomes unwatchable. Argued for a secular democratic state, and Yeshai has quite consistently argued for for nationalism. And tribalism in this region, correct? All right, we look. We we have ten minutes left. We're we're going to move to to final thoughts. Um, I would like for the final thoughts to be such where we're maybe touching on something new, some new information, a new point, a new concept. Maybe leaving the viewers with uh, hope and inspiration. Um, but yeah, the, the floor is yours, uh, Yishai. Okay, it's been fun. And I have to tell you, quite honestly, without without any sarcasm, is that I was uh, looking forward and even a little bit nervous uh, to speak and debate uh, Amir Zahir. I think that he is a fine mind uh, and uh, has fine oratory and legal you know, capability. To me, uh, he sadly, uh, in his way of thinking, is the thing that will bring endless conflict. He does not really uh, sue for uh, normalization. He's anti-normalization. And therefore, that kind of uh, attitude will never win because Israel will never leave. Right now, Israel is a little bit under the gun with, uh, with, with a, a globe, young global uh, opinion because of uh, successful people like Amer and the, the whole uh, discussion of apartheid and all that. But it'll go away because it's not real. Uh, <coughs> Palestine is not in this holy land. It's not in this land. This is Judea. This is the land of Israel. It's historical. It's legal. We've purchased the land. We've won it in wars. We, we give the most opportunity for upward mobility in this region. And the Arabs around this region know that. They want that. You could see how the UAE Arabs look at the Palestinians and are like, you guys just want endless war, but we want prosperity. So people like Amr Zahir look like he is fighting for 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 his people and he's a freedom fighter he's a fighter for war and as i said before and i'll say it again he he didn't like it but he's not going to face the consequences because he he could live here but he chooses not to because his work is there whatever it is the bottom line is he's not going to face the problem of of anti-normalization with israel and the thing is about israel is we are as we say in arabic majnoon we're crazy we're going to hold on to this land through thick and thin because allah gave us this land because history gave us this land because we're indigenous to this land as he even agreed we're never leaving this place we're only going to get here more and more and so and not only that allah is, is helping us succeed here our finances our our our, our gdp is growing our, our success is growing why because this is a, a blessed land and, and this is a blessed thing. And, and Arabs that want normalization, including even Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, not to mention Egypt, the great leaders uh, of the wars against Israel are moving in the other direction. So, OK, so you have here a guy who is anti-normalization, anti-peace, but there's something else going on. That's the Abraham Accords. That's a different spirit. I could tell you that in Hebron, which is a city that has a lot of Hamas. There's Abraham Accords in Hebron. We are constantly working on business together and understanding each other. We sit together, talk religion to one another. There is a better future, but you have to be able to see through the lies and through the hate. And one of the ways that they lie to you is that they tell you, uh, yeah, let's adopt a American style colonialist ideology of how the Middle East should run. And it's weirdly being articulated through the mouth of, of Amr Zahir. This is not going to be the thing that rules around here. This is a religious region, a historical region, a tribal region. Israel is um, uh, it's a reservation for the Jews, a small minority in this region, and it is a blessing to this region. Arabs that want peace with us, uh, that want normalization, will be blessed. Uh, as as the Bible tells us, as the Torah tells us, as the Quran even basically says, you bless the Jews and you'll get blessings right back. The endless war is pointless. A uh, uh, hundred years of Arab lives and Jewish lives have been lost. They have led to nothing. It's time to accept Israel as a reality and not to do what Amr Zahir recommends, which is resistance, including Hamas and Hezbollah. Do you think that the people living in Lebanon like living under Hezbollah. This is what he recommends. He likes how Hezbollah operates. Do you think that the people living under Hamas like <clears> that <throat> option? I remember I was in Gaza when we, when Israel was stupidly pulling out and the Arabs said to me through the fence, they said, we beg you, don't do this to us. Don't subjugate us by allowing these Hamas folks, these Hezbollah type folks to take over. 
this region wants a new spirit. It's a spirit of coexistence, of working together, the Abraham Accords. Or you can choose the, the path of resistance, which is the path of endless war, the path of Hezbollah and Hamas, uh, the path of Amr Zahar. I would choose the path of God, the path of Abraham Accords. Thanks, Yishai. Amr, the floor is yours. Final thoughts. You know, I was, uh, and I'm sure I will get attacked by many fellow Palestinians for even sitting down in a debate like this. And I did it for one reason. And Yeshai pointed it out. Because it is important that people in my audiences and other audiences, not simply only sort of right-wing Israeli audiences where Yeshai comes from, that they hear these arguments. That they hear it very clearly. They're not new to us, but that they hear it and hear them pointed out for what they are. Again, Yeshai has continued. Forget about the personal attacks on me. I don't, I don't really care. He can pull up all the quotes about me that I've ever said. Yes, I believe in resisting Israeli occupation. Yes, I believe that every form of Zionism is racist. I'm not ashamed of anything he brought up. I don't walk away from anything that he, that he brought up. Thank you for the marketing. Okay. But let me say this very clearly. I say often, and Yeshai has confirmed this, that the debate that goes on inside Israeli society, minus maybe like, I mean, Israeli Jewish society, minus maybe 5% of Israeli Jews, 5 to 10% that might believe in the vision that I'm putting forward. But the debate that goes on between the right and the left is basically um, about how much land should we give up so we can maintain this idea of Jewish supremacy. There are some people on the left, if you want to call it left in Israel, say we're willing to give up a little bit of land to the Palestinians and let them have a state, some sort of Swiss cheese thing that we still control. But okay, let them have something so we can maintain Jewish supremacy in the land. And there's some people like Yeshai who don't believe in giving up any inch of the land in order to maintain Jewish supremacy. And their dealing with the Palestinians will be, as he said, some sort of non-citizenship, residency, some sort of status, some sort of autonomy. And we have names for these things. Apartheid, Jim Crow, Bantu stands. This is what they did in South Africa. This is what basically the vision for, for Palestine that Yishai, Yishai sorry, is um, advocating for is, you know, America in Mississippi in 1920. Okay, slavery is over, but there is Jim Crow. We are very openly going to say that white people have more rights than black people. We have very clearly come to a point in world society where we reject these kinds of things. And you can bring up, you can use crazy language like Palestinians are not really from there, Palestinians, Abraham Accords, all this. It doesn't really matter. Ultimately, what you're advocating for, Rabbi, is Jewish supremacy in the land of Israel at the expense of non-Jews. It would be, look, I know Israel likes to say it came, it, it says it was a, uh, 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 they were uh, 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 came to a land without a people for a people without a land. Well, it turns out that that wasn't true, right? They like to say that they made the desert bloom. No, Arab civilizations were there and it was blooming already. You made it bloom more, that's fine, but it was blooming already. There were people there. There was a civilization there. I made a video about a year and a half ago where I said very clearly in Arabic, I don't know how good your Arabic is, Rabbi, but I said what my mom always says, which is echaduha mafrushi, which is they took it fully furnished. They moved into my grandmother's house. We went back and looked at my mother's house in the old city of Akka, which is now owned by Jews, and my grandfather was not compensated for that. So, I mean, again, this consistent theme of the rabbi's vision of the land is Jewish supremacy and a denial of Palestinian indigeneity. No, I, mean, I just just wasn't one thing, which is I not, totally not, believe I in. You, I will not be interrupted. I, I just want you to say that I totally believe in compensation, full compensation. I just want okay, you to know that. Good. Is it going to come? From, probably you believe though in an American com coming from the American taxpayer. But in any case, no, no, so, no I, so, I don't need that. Thank you. So, so uh, at ultim ultimately, ultimately, uh, Palestinians, we are a people. We were there in that land. We're not from somewhere else. We had a civilization. We continue to have a civilization. Uh, uh, I mean, Israel can try and steal it as much as it wants. Israel makes videos now talking about 
how Mensef is Israeli, how homeless is, how all these kinds, of, whatever, whatever. It just is admission, right? That we were there and that we're from there. American TV shows that want to film scenes that take place in Beirut, do it in Haifa because Haifa is an Arab looking city on the Mediterranean because it was Arab for 1400 years before the establishment of the state of Israel. Again, this com continued denial, it's frustrating as a Palestinian to hear it from this, this sort of racist tropes and racist discussion that Yeshaya is having. It's frustrating, but it's not new. We've been hearing this stuff since 1948 and since before 1948, and we've been victims of this ethnic cleansing. And by the way, this has been documented mo most aptly by Israeli historians, not Palestinian historians, who have talked about the ethnic cleansing of Palestine over and over again, and Yeshai knows very well who they are. So listen, there is going to be a conversation that continues. There's going to be a conversation that continues in the world. But ultimately, the first thing you have to start off with is that racism, ethnic supremacy, religious supremacy, bigot, uh, bigotry, discrimination, whatever, of any kind needs to be rejected. You can't justify it like the rabbi here is today. And I don't know if that, I mean, I'm not an expert on rabbinical law, but I don't know if that's what it teaches, okay? But to, 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 to start off with, look, Jews are going to have more rights here. And so let's build everything off of that. That's something that I wholly reject and I hope most people would wholly reject. So thank you. Thank you both. Um, this was, this was interesting. Um, I would be happy to have you both on for another session, maybe not even with each other. Maybe we could do a one-on-one -on -one because I would actually like to get deeper with both of you on your respective uh, visions and ideologies. I think there could be some, <coughs> I think it could be fruitful. Um, we're going to go to Discord for an after party. Uh, Amer, Yishai, you're both invited. If you'd like, Yishai, I know you've been in the Discord before. Amer, if you'd like, we do like a video uh, chat on Discord. If not, maybe at a future date. Um, and that's it, friends. Next week, we have a debate between Zach and Zach, round number three, Zionist Zach versus anti-Zionist Zach. It's going to be an interesting one. And that's it. Uh, much love to all the viewers. And thank you, Amr. Thank you, Yishai. Thank you. Thank you.